tweeted it out. Give me Dwight, I'd say about minus 800, between minus 600, minus 800, right? Like Dwight, AD, those are Tyson odds. If they were to actually square up and fight, I think 50 said it best, right? You shouldn't throw stones if you live in a glass house. And if you've got a glass jaw, you should watch your mouth. Anthony Davis. Apparently it was squashed. You know, we're, we're, us fans were like to make a lot about something, even when it's nothing, right? But you saw the little tussle. AD tried to hem up Dwight, and then Dwight flopped, right? Dwight went down like, whoa, 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 whoa. I think he's savvy enough to understand, you know, he'll, he'll be off the squad real quick if it really was something serious. But it was just funny to see AD try to hulk up, right, when he has a hard time just standing on two feet on the court for most of the game. But, you know, this Laker team finally gets a win last night, barely against the Memphis Grizzlies. You had to get Olympic mellow last night. The Lakers, in order to get their first win of the season, they had to somehow find Olympic. What do you have, seven threes? Super efficient, banging them down. And like, that's, it was funny because watching Melo in that performance last night, and he's been good for the last couple of years, right? Ever since really he went to Portland, he's become much more efficient off the ball. But, uh, you know, that was the vision for Melo. It was like, all right, this is the, the final phase of his career as a spot up three point shooter. And now he's, he's become pretty prolific, but you know, the reality of this Lakers team is, is, and the reason why it's kind of fun to dig at the fans is because the arrogance of a lot of Laker nation was like, Oh man, it's over. It's a wrap. Like, to be honest with you, it, the roster looks like a 10 year old put it together on 2k. It, it, it don't make no sense, but they get their first win. I saw a very interesting stat from Kirk. Goldsberry, I believe his name is, the stat dude, right? The uh, Sprawl Ball, I believe is his book, um, NBA Analytics. And he, it, the stat was just showing how much, how much more LeBron is settling from the perimeter. He's shooting the ball better from three, but he's pretty much just been a jump shooter. And maybe that's just him getting his legs under him, right? And maybe this is just the final phase of LeBron and he doesn't, because what you do notice is when he does get downhill, he's powerful and he has that spin move, but it's not nearly as explosive, especially vertically, right? Like guys aren't as afraid to get in his way and kind of challenge him and take that bump. But, you know, being the king, he's going to get that block charge call, I'd say 85, 90% of the time. Uh, moving on from that, did you see Joel Embiid address the Sixers crowd? talking about Ben still our brother. To me, I was like, man, how did they get Joel to do that? They must have told Joel, like, look, we'll get a better player back if you tell them this. I think really the bridges have been burned between those two in particular. Have y'all seen the Sacramento Kings and Davion Mitchell yet? Putting the clamps on Donovan Mitchell? When was it? I think Friday night. You seen the stat line? He's, he's clamping up guards, right? Didn't do it to Steph last night, but look, man, it was, it was obvious. It was obvious, and it's too early to try to start to take victory laps on rookies and stuff like that, but this is one where it was like, okay, so what, he's 23, his lateral quickness, his strength, his IQ, he's going to be a nightmare defensively, and sure enough, that's what he's been thus far. I'll talk a little more Kings later, but uh, <clears throat> I think one thing is young players take notice, right? He didn't clamp Steph up last night. And he acknowledged himself like, yo, Steph, Steph is a different type of beast, right? He's a different monster. Not in just the fact that, you know, he's probably the MVP through a week of the season, but the fact that he moves and plays off ball. It neutralizes a lockdown defender like that. And that's kind of what you saw. He, he, took his, he took his shots on him, but he wasn't, that wasn't the story of that game. What I'd like to do is give a very early rookie report here. Again, we can't, <laughs> it really takes... Like, here's one for instance. Ja Morant looks like a dark horse MVP through the first week of the season. And again, we got a long ways to go, right? So these are kind of outrageous statements at this point. But those of, that, those of you that have been following me for a while, especially my patrons, some of the live streams and draft stuff we've done, you can remember. What was it? This is year three now for Ja, right? You can remember that draft class. I was like, yo, I'm taking Ja over Zion. I'm taking Ja over Zion because of what's happened now with Zion, right? And I don't want to keep talking about Zion in the weight and the, and the, and the I just, I, look, I don't want to turn on TLC one evening and see Zion on a forklift. I, I, don't, I don't understand 
how the Pelicans have let it get this far. Like, if he, they know he had a broken foot in surgery, I'm checking up on dude every day. I'm sending the trainer, the nutritionist to the crib every day. Where they just like go like a couple weeks without seeing him and they're like, damn, uh, this shit's crazy. But anyway, back to the point is that it takes two or three years really <clears throat> to flush these things out. And sometimes even longer as far as like if we're going to have, oh, this, you know, this player at five, this player at seven, all that stuff. Right. So it takes a while. But here's the very early rookie report for those of you that haven't caught some of these kids. I want to start with Evan Mobley because summer league. I didn't like what I saw. He, he looked timid. He looked weak. He looked meek, you know, and he was just, uh, it, it was ugly. But now through what, three or four games, he's putting up 15, listen to this stat line, 15 points, eight boards, three assists, two blocks and a steal. Now Cleveland's playing him 30 plus minutes. He's doing this at 56% from the field. Now the three ball ain't there yet. 25%. Um, but yeah, if, if you want to have a knee jerk reaction, he looks like a young Anthony Davis, and he looks like the rookie of the year. If he's going to get all those minutes, even amongst those two other seven-footers, that's what's kind of impressive about the numbers um, because you would have thought it would have been kind of kind of a, a, a backlogged front court. Scotty Barnes out in Toronto, 18 and 10, 52% from the field, now 20% from three. You're seeing all the rookies struggle, I think, with the NBA three-point line. And uh, I think just... When, especially, too, when they're adjusting to the speed and physicality of the game, that long-range shot is going to be affected. But Scotty Barnes is my pick for Rookie of the Year. But I, I do think that if Siakam returns, that could throw a wrench in it, right? Because he'll eat a lot of that role in minutes, but he's a ways away. So, But Barnes looks as advertised. I, they, they had him on Luka the other night and his athleticism. I think the key for him is let's, let's monitor the free throws. 75% right now, and it's very early, obviously, but the way he plays, the way he gets to the rim and how active he is, he's got to be around 75, 80% to really fill the stat sheet and get some of that offense because the three ball is a ways away, right? And then speaking of the three ball, Jalen Green has had a very rough start. I don't know what his averages are now after last night because he finally had a big game, but going into yesterday evening's game against the Celtics, he was averaging nine points and three boards, 18% from three. Right. And he hadn't shot a free throw. And so through those two games, no free throws, that let me know that he ain't really feeling the physicality. We all know he has God level bounce, but he is 185 pounds soaking wet. So he's going to have to get stronger. Yesterday he goes off, though. He hits eight threes, goes for 30 against the Celtics. Right. And so <clears throat> I'm just curious to see with Jalen. I think he's a lot of people's kind of odds on favorite for rookie of the year. Let's see what happens as the league adjusts. They're going to start running him off the three-point line. He's prolific, that elevation. Good luck with it, right? He, he can shoot contested shots with, with that elevation. But as, as teams start to run him off the three-point line, let's see how he gets to the line and how he handles contact getting downhill. That, that's, that's what I have my eye on as far as Jalen Green goes. But yeah, man, the rookies have been fun. They've looked good so far. I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep checking in with them. They have very early returns, right? You know, I... Paul George, what is he averaging 40? He's doing everything they asked for. I just.